All right, we have two containers A and B of volumes 3 times 10 to the power negative 3 centimeters cubed and 6 times 10 to the power negative 3 centimeters cubed respectively. And these contain gas at this pressure and at that temperature. So this is exactly what we're talking about. If you may put this in the diagram, we have this uh, gas two containers A and B of volume. So meaning if this is container A, the volume of this container is definitely going to be 3 times 10 to the power negative 3 and uh, the one for vo the container for volume B, the volume for B, this is volume for A. Volume for B is 6 times 10 to the power negative 3 and it's all in centimeters cubed respectively. These two contain gases or they contain a gas at pressure of that and at temperature. So these two have um, a gas whose pressure is 1.0 times 10 to the power 3 pascals and uh, the temperature of the gas is 300 Kelvin. So these are the initial conditions. Now the question continues to tell us that now the container A is heated to 375 Kelvin. So uh, the initial conditions are that the temperature is 300 Kelvin in both containers and the pressure but then, then, then thereafter, the container A is heated up to 375 Kelvin. So let's write this in different ink. Temperature 2 for A is, um, the thing is heated to 375 Kelvin while container B is cooled to, so the temperature 2 for B, it is cooled to 273 Kelvin. So now the question says, find the total pressure of the gas after this temperature changes. So we are having a gas in A and B in these two containers that are connected using that tap. The number of moles of the gas in these containers will remain the same. So that is exactly what we are going to do. That The number of moles in A and B, uh, the number of moles of the gas in A and B, before we we change these temperatures is going to be equal to the number of moles of the gas in a and b after we change the temperature or we change the condition so so we know that pv is equal to n r t remember we're dealing with an ideal gas so we're going to be using the ideal gas equation the this value of n stands for the number of moles then r is a constant t is the temperature then p and v pressure and volume so we make when we make n the subject to the formula we know that n is going to be equal to pv over rt so the n is what is turning the number of moles and we know that the number of moles or the amount of gas in those containers is going to remain the same regardless of what amount of heat is added or subtracted to that system of gases so what are the number of moles of these gases in A and B before we subjected this gas to increase the temperatures in container A and reduce into container B? So before or initially we can say that initially the number of moles in A will be PV over RT and that's going to be equal to the number of moles in A uh, the pressure in A, remember initially the pressure was 1.0 times 10 to the power 3, so it's, this is going to be 1.0 times 10 to the power 3, multiply that by the initial volume of A, of course the volume of A is 3 times 10 to the power negative 3. Divide all, all that by the constant R, multiply that by the temperature, the temperature at the initial was 300 Kelvin times 300 Kelvin. So that was the initial number of moles in container A. And also the initial number of moles in container B is going to be equal to PV over RT. And this is definitely going to give us the pressure, which pressure is the same. It's still 1 times 10 to the power 3. Multiply that by a volume. The volume of B is 6 times 10 to the power negative 3. Divide that by R, which is 8.31. Multiply that by the temperature. The initial temperature is 300 Kelvin. It was 300 Kelvin all through. So these are the number of moles before. Then 
uh, we subject this container to heat. When we subject it to heat, we know that the total moles here all through it's going to be the same. Only that some molecules will move this way and mix up with B and so and vice versa. So after we we increase, for example, they said they're telling us that we when you subject this thing to heat, the temperature, I mean the temperature of container A raises from 300 to 375 Kelvin. The temperature of B reduces from 300 to 273 Kelvin. That's according to the question. So what are the new number of moles when this happens? This is how we compute it. The number of moles in A are going to become PV over RT. Now, of course, after these temperature changes, the total pressure in A and B will change because pressure and temperature have a relationship. So these pressures in here will change when we change the temperatures of these containers. But much as the temperatures are, the, the pressures are going to change as a result of these changes in temperatures, the number of molecules in here will remain the same. So after the temperature changes, the number of particle or the number of moles in container A are going to become we have pressure times volume, but the pressure will change. It has changed to a new value. We do not know, so we shall just maintain it as P. Multiply that by the volume. Of course, the volume of the container is still constant. It's still three times ten to the power negative three. Divide that by R times T, which is eight point three one times the temperature, the new temperature, remember initially it was 300 Kelvin, now the temperature has changed, according to the question, to 375 Kelvin. So this becomes multiplied by a lot by 375 Kelvin, and this uh, definitely, the number of moles in B are going to be pressure, remember it's the same pressure as this one We're in the in the two containers, the pressure changed, we do not know the new pressure. And definitely that's what we are looking for in the question. Multiply that by the volume. The volume of container B according to our question, of course it is still 6 times 10 to the power negative 3. Divide that by 8.31 times. Remember for container B the temperature initially was 300 Kelvin and now it was reduced to 273 Kelvin. So that's multiply, multiply that by 273 Kelvin. Kelvin. So definitely here we have the conditions, the number of moles before, then the number of moles after. And we are saying that regardless of what happens here, the number of moles or the amount of gas, the quantity, the mass of the gas will remain the same. On that account we shall definitely say the total number of moles before in both containers A and B, that is before we subjected them to the gas, is going to be equal to the number of moles after this temperature changes. And so from this case we shall say that N, the number of moles, we, that is the number of moles in container A plus number of moles in container B is going to be equal to the number of moles after. And from that expression we shall be able to get the pressure. And of course, when we get the number of particles in A, which is this expression that we reduce us to this one, plus the number of particles in B, which is this expression that reduces to that one, is going to be equal to the number of particles after you've subjected the thing to the temperatures, which is equal to that. Then also the number of particles, which is this expression. So here, when we summarize all this and we work out, we end up with the value of P as. This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out other excellent videos on the channel and don't forget to subscribe. For Kisembo Academy, this is Anwar Brangakuramia helping you manifest excellence.